Well, um, I don't know exactly. You know, again, it's it. Um, I can't, I don't know that I had necessarily uh, a game plan other than you know I wanted to you know life isn't a dress rehearsal. Um, you know, I mean, it's really ultimately why I left the Pistons. There used to be an old beer commercial uh, that said, you know, you only go around once in life, and it was kind of a shame a beer company had to come up with that. But yeah, um, it's true. And so, you know, I'm trying to do as much as I can. And, you know, even though I created all my breaks, um, I did, you know, I had an advantage over a lot of my um, ancestors, if you will, in terms of, um, you know, I was able to save quite a, quite a bit of money. And although, again, I wasn't any kind of uh, uh, born entrepreneur, it was just situational. But I did feel in my mind in 1998 that, you know, not many of my ancestors previously really ever had the chance to be an entrepreneur. And I really yeah. felt like, um, um, you know, that, that uh, you know, I had that opportunity to do it. And, but once you do make that uh, jump, um, you know, there's nothing you can do but be successful. You just, yeah. you got to figure it well, out. Well, in all fairness, you also noted the fact that you said you were working three times as hard and working three times as more hours. In your situation, maybe there's a little more freedom to do that because it was all about results ultimately. But if you do the math based on maybe some of your your past ancestors that you're talking about, if they work three times as much, they might have had the opportunity to do the same thing. So there is always clues when it comes to the way that you've been able to get to where you're at. They they had, uh, of course, they had that opportunity, Ryan. But you know, like my grandmother was like oldest of 10 kids and the, yeah you know she was 14 when the mom died you know and so like again those kind of stories of way back then yeah where it wasn't like one could have imagined she would have become an entrepreneur I like, weren't in yeah. that type of but I had a, a pretty comfortable situation that would allow me to at least take that step yeah but it, but it is important in my opinion the only reason I want to make that point is because there's so many people out there that might look at their situation and say Oh, well, I didn't go to college, so I guess I can't be successful. Well, I guess I can't be an entrepreneur because at the end of the day, new oppor opportunities presented themselves for you because of your hard work. Those opportunities would have not been there had you not worked that hard. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I'm a little bit of a broken record with uh, hundreds of kids that, um, you know, I, it seems when you have a name like General Sports and you've been in this business as long as as I have, you get a lot of parents, kids that, uh, you know, call for advice and yeah, I hate to sound like a broken record, but it is, you know, I, I mean, certainly you have to have some degree of talent. Um, but you also, um, it's, I swear it's 70, 80% hard work. Even when I talk I think to the my talent son, gets developed by the amount of time that you're putting yeah, to it. I even, you even know, even when I talk to my son, especially salespeople, I mean, it is just, you know, they can be as successful as they want to be. Yeah. Um, my son started working. He worked for three years for the Chicago Fire, the Major League Soccer, and I would routinely talk to him about, um, you know, it's not any different than what it was 40 years ago when I worked for the Pistons. You know, most everybody left at 5 o'clock. And I said to my son, if he just worked till 6 o'clock, uh, which isn't a big hardship, um, you know, he will be the top salesperson. But yeah. if he could just work till 7 that's 10 hours more a week than everybody else. And, uh, you know, he, he should be at least um, far ahead of everybody else, uh, maybe even twice, two or three times better, just from putting in that extra effort. Uh, now, in my case, it was more like I, you know, stayed at the old... Doubled it. I only Never just lived there. The, <laughs> stayed at the Silverdome until, you know, 9, 9, 9 p.m. every night. Yeah, no, but it's, it's a simple thing and a simple formula for everybody watching. If you just do the math on what you just said, it's not that you necessarily, yeah, maybe you were a little more talented because you'd got more reps, but you just do the simple math. If you're working that many more hours, you're going to have better results. And it's a lot less stressful, in my opinion, to look at it that way versus feeling that you need this innate talent to be better than everybody else. If you just work more hours or you put more time and energy into it, it's a simple formula, like you said, for success. Yeah, and I really feel like, um, you know, you can make decisions, good decisions. And what does that mean? Well, 
you know, when you make a decision, um, like when I left the Pistons, I remember three or four months after, I'm like, geez, you know, this is harder than I thought. You know, this is, uh, you know, I had all these great deals lined up, but they're not saying yes, they're delaying. And, you know, it, and, um, and I thought to myself, well, this is going to go down as the dumbest decision in history um, if I'm not successful um, with this. Although, you know, certainly I knew I had a, uh, a backstop in the sense that I could always go back to the Pistons and Tom. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, I just kind of thought it through and said, okay, um, I'm going to have to make this a good decision, <laughs> meaning I'm going to have to do everything imaginable to support this decision. Yeah. And maybe it means I'm going to have to work harder or do another gear. Um, but that's, that's what I'm going to have to do, which is exactly what I did. And uh, of course it, you know, fortunately and thankfully became a, a pretty good sized success. Yeah. I mean, when you ask powerful questions, you're going to be summoned and required to come up with powerful solutions as well. Right. So, but I mean, I think people sometimes think you make a red or black decision yeah. on the roulette wheel. And it's really not that way. It's like, you know, I, I make a lot of good decisions in my life, but only because I support the heck out of those decisions. I don't just let it's let, strategic. Well, it's I, strategic. I, I don't let, um, you know, other forces just make it a good decision or a bad decision. Yeah. I know I have the power, uh, to single handedly, if I have to, uh, make it a good decision. Um, you know, even with our agency, you know, it's, uh, it's a, uh, an agency that's been going now for three and a half years. Uh, it's got tremendous potential, uh, but I also realize that I need to be in all those different areas to add as much uh, wisdom, as many relationships, as much, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, any kind of skill or acumen I need to throw into that equation or experience yeah. uh, in order to make the chances of that success go up dramatically. Yeah. And I wanted to jump back real quick to the piston situation. Was that the hardest point in your career? Was that the most difficult experience that you went through in your career? Would you say? Cause that was one of the questions I wanted to ask you was what is, what was the most difficult thing you went through in your career and mentally, yeah. how did you get through it? What? Well, uh, well, there, there was one thing that was really bad and that was, we almost bought the St. Louis blues, uh, NHL team in okay. 2006 and okay. um you know that was a, a long long story and you know one that um was unfortunate and um you know we more than likely should have had that club but a few different things kind of happened at the end that were unforeseen that um you know was not necessarily um uh, the right thing to do on other people's be on other people's understood uh, understood point. <laughs> um but that was a that was a tough one because, you know, I knew that that was going to be uh, a great opportunity to buy a major league club and to uh, own it. I was ready to move to St. Louis and, and uh, um, you know, really put my heart and soul into it. And, you know, losing that was hard because uh, not only um, was it a, a tremendous opportunity in every way for me, but also those kind of deals um, – you know, you have to really look the part and bring in all the experts yeah. and the best yeah, lawyers yeah. and best due diligence. And it was literally a million dollars worth of due diligence that I had to do. Plus I raised 60 or 70 million in like four weeks to do it because it was a very tight time frame. And then to lose all that and then get stuck with a million dollars in bills. Yeah. And that was a hard, that was a tough point. I, I, uh, everybody loses sleep in life. Um, I probably didn't sleep for seven, seven straight days then, but like anything, you just got to pick yourself up and, uh, you know, and of course at that moment I was just had my fourth child and I think she was sleeping at the, um, bottom of our bed. So, you know, again, nothing I could do, but bounce back and, yeah. and, and, you know, find a way to make it work. And because of that experience, it did allow me to, um, you know, get the next deal done. I think, you yeah. know, I, I had more experience. Well, to me, it seems like it would have been super valuable to realize you can't control every situation and you can only control what, what you can control. There's so many other variables at play there. 
And at the end of the day, you can't force and make everything happen based on solely what you do. Yeah. So, but you were just asking, you know, what was the toughest time? Yeah. That was probably the hardest part of my life, that, that two or three week window. But again, and the piston thing was very hard. Um, you know, people now think that I was probably, um, when I tell people that it wasn't monetarily, I mean, it was literally 50 bucks a week, uh, 7% commission, yeah. no benefits, but I had a lot of confidence in myself and, um, and you know, and at that time, you know, you're 23 years old, you're healthy as can be, nothing um, to lose, you know, but, well, benefits didn't matter. So like I was yeah. even thinking yeah. about that when I came here. Yeah. And, um, you know, I had literally an old car and $300, uh, maybe 200. And, uh, but it was like, okay. And, and then understanding that to be successful, you have to sell tickets again, that even though it's hard and it's a bit of a boot camp, um, you know, I geez, I'll get to work for the Pistons and, mm -hmm. you know, we're, you know, Dennis Rodman's coming in for his first day and, uh, you know, Isaiah, I mean, it was um, a, a great place to work as well, though, especially the old Silverdome days where we, um, you know, got got better and better. When I first came there, though, I mean, I think we started out two and eight or two and nine that first year um, back in 86, 87. And it was really somewhere around probably January where things really turned around and um, suddenly we became a much better team and, you know, fortunately had uh, several good years in a row there. That's, that's awesome to hear. Well, I know you're tight on time here, so I don't want to hold you up too much, but I do want to yeah. recap with, with just a couple notes that people at home can take. So sure. I like to divide this in kind of two parts. One is going to be very specific to your niche being sports management. If you were to give three, p three pieces of advice to someone that maybe was starting off in sports management, what would be those pieces of advice that you would give to them? Just starting out. Yeah. So, um, well, one goes without saying, you know, even if you don't feel like you need to work hard to, um, you know, to succeed, you know, I, I think you have to be able to work hard and, um, and probably harder than the peer next to you. Um, I think it's very important to build relationships um, you know, I, I felt, um, I was very lucky in the sense that, you know, pretty much everybody took my call when I was with the Pistons. And, um, because of that, you know, a lot of people want to be your friend when you work for the, a sports team. And so yeah. I think if you're working for a sports team, even if you're working for the USPBL, I think you have a, an advantage in the sense that most people want to be your friend already, yeah. you know, why don't you get out and, uh, and do that? And I think, you know, I think the third thing is that to be forward thinking and to um, be thinking about um, what you want to accomplish uh, in your career. And, um, and I think those are the three things that I talk mostly about to young people. But higher on the list than anything is the hard work part. Okay. And again, to me, that's the easiest part. I yeah. mean, imagine all you have to do is work hard. And, uh, and you can be successful. I mean, that, I don't know. It, to me, yeah. that just seems uh, like uh, a, great, a great opportunity. Again, knowing that there are a lot of things in life, no matter how great and much you practice to be a ballerina or, yeah. or, or to, you know, play third base for the Red Sox or, uh, you know, make the Pistons team. I mean, it, it's just not going to happen no matter what. Well, like no we talked about, do. there's things that you can't control. And that is one thing that you absolutely can yeah. is your hard work. So um, I want to be a little more general in this last one. This is going to be for any young person that's starting off. And I want it to be for someone maybe that hasn't really stacked any of the wins. Like we said, it's very easy to, once you start to stack and stack and stack and build confidence in what you're doing, it's very easy to build upon that. But if you're not yet, you haven't built any of those successes yet, what would be maybe three pieces of advice to get someone out the door, get started? Well, I think, um, at least as it relates to sales, um, you know, I think, you know, even though it's competitive, you know, I always thought to myself, even in a tough competitive situation, I would think to myself, you know, who in this room would I least want to compete against? And, yeah. and I always felt like 
I would be the hardest to compete against. So that always gave me a comfort level with, uh, with competition. Um, and what was the other question? Uh, so it's ultimately just for someone that's starting off yeah. that maybe d doesn't have any confidence in, in right. what they've done. Maybe they haven't. For you, it, m it might have been your start in wrestling. You were very good yeah. at competing in that at that level. If someone hasn't maybe had any of those wins yet, what would be the best way to get started in terms of? Well, I mean, I think you just have to jump in there. I think that almost any team in sports will give you a chance, but they're not going to uh, give you any kind of a signing bonus or anything yeah. to get started. So most teams will give people an opportunity to get in there and create revenue. So clearly, you know, you kind of have to get your resume out there to as many of the pro teams as possible. And now more than ever, there's zillions of pro teams uh, in even now down to women's soccer, women's yeah. hockey, yeah. all sorts of soccer leagues and such. So there's m many more leagues than just the big four that we had when, you know, when I first started. Um, so it's all about creating that first win doesn't matter if it's at the NHL level or if it's at a super low level. It could be collegiate level even. That's right. And there's plenty of room to move up um, if you're successful. Um, I think, you know, I think that, that you also have to have uh, confidence in yourself. I think you have to have confidence in the profession. Uh, you know, my daughter, I kind of look at fashion and sports in the same way. I mean, it's... Um, really hard to break into. My daughter was a 4.0 student at Michigan and had to, had to get an internship in New York City uh, with a company um, just to get started in fashion. Yeah. And sports is the same way. You could be a Rhodes Scholar and, and you know, you may have to start at the bottom in sports. Um, so I think if you want to get into those professions um, that are so highly sought after, you know, you're going to, the ante is you're going to have to really work hard. Well, it's good to hear that. I mean, it sounds like those are results driven anyway. So it's like you could be a 4.0, but you could do nothing for us when you get here. So well, exactly. if it's all about results anyways, that gives everybody free opportunity. So yeah, exactly. good news for everybody out there. All right. I want to thank everybody for making the time to learn today, believing in the possibility that life can get better and challenging yourself to grow. We cannot wait to see you next time. Hopefully you got one step closer to your dreams today and never stop pursuing precision. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Ryan. All right, guys, that is going to conclude episode nine of the Pursuit of Precision podcast with Andy Appleby. It was unbelievable to sit down with someone who's accomplished such great things over his career and, and scaled in different ways um, that you wouldn't necessarily think in order to get to where he's at. So very, very cool. I took so much from this interview. I hope you guys did too. I'm going to recap now my top three lessons that I've learned. One, hard work beats and precedes talent every single time. Now, Andy went on about his story and how he get, got started uh, on the track to eventually owning an entire professional baseball league. And where it started off was in sales. And when he continued to talk about the beginning of his career, it was all about working more hours. It was all about spending more time at the office. It was never about him necessarily having more talent or being more experienced than anybody else. He just simply thought to himself, if I work more hours, if I spend more time doing this, not only am I going to get better, better results simply because of the math and the time that you're spending there, but even more so you're going to gain and learn skills quicker than your peers. Two, value opportunity over dollars. And what I mean by this is when Andy initially took this position to go work for the Pistons, this is where he got his start in sports, he, he wasn't making much money. There were all kinds of other situations and opportunities where he could have took the easy route and made extra money quicker, right? But he saw the opportunity to work for a massive organization that he saw a good future with. And he definitely had to take a pay cut in, in the front end. And fortunately, because he did that, he was allowed to, he was able to prove himself and prove the results right when he joined. And that's how he was able to scale and get to a, a high point within this company very, very quickly. Three, and this is very important for those that have been doing and working at something for a long time. Never lose sight of what inspires your next steps. 
Now, Andy is quite far along in his career. He said he's been working for nearly 40 years now at this point. And let's be honest with with ourselves. There's really no reason for him needing to spend as much time at the office and work as hard as he still does. He has plenty of money. He obviously has great relationships in the community. He could very easily ride off into the sunset. But at the end of the day, he is still alive. And like he said many times in his interview, you've only got one shot at this. And he said, if I'm going to be here, I'm going to be doing something that motivates me and excites me. It makes me want to get up the next day to go. So no matter how far you are in your career, what accomplishments you've had or wherever you're at in your journey, you got to always be looking for that next thing that's going to excite you and get you out of bed in the morning. All right, everybody. I hope those three things are going to help you maybe apply to something that you're going through in your life. We are continually learning new things from all these new guests that we have, and you're going to love the next few that we have lined up. So make sure you tune in and never stop pursuing precision. Thank you.